And when he came to this earth, the Bible says that he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. Hallelujah. Now, being found in the fashion as a man, fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Watch this, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also have highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the, under the earth. Now, this is Jesus. Now, this is the, the person you know who I mean I'm think uh, he's part he's part of the Trinity but coming onto this earth the Bible said he made himself of no reputation and God who came I mean because part of the Trinity God the Son you know you know we have the Trinity God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit but when God the Son came onto this earth he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Wow. Now, being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself. No, notice these key words. Made himself of no reputation. And then the next key word is that he took upon himself the form of a servant. Form of a servant. The next thing is he humbled himself and then obedient. He became obedient unto death. Wherefore God also now, because he knew, he knew, uh, 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 he knew that he has, he had to make, you know, make himself of no reputation, and 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 take upon him the form of a servant, and and being in the form of a man. Now he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. And because of this, wherefore God also has also, also what highly exalted because of this, God exalted him and gave him a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, at the mention of his name, uh, at the mention of his name Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Watch this, we have three places. One, I mean, right now we are on earth. That's the only thing that we can see. You know, we can see with our eyes. But there are two, two places that are seen. Underneath the earth, there is a world that exists and in the heavens. But he said because he took upon himself the form of a servant and made himself of no reputation and humbled himself and, and was, was obedient even to death. Christ was exalted because of this. He was exalted by God. Character. Tonight I'm talking about character. I'm talking about character, beloved. We cannot come into the kingdom of God and and and, and say we because because we have been saved uh, by his by his by his grace. We still take the old self into the kingdom. We still want to, we still want to carry the old nature, the old nature into the kingdom. That is not possible. It is impossible. Hallelujah. It is impossible. Beloved, even Jesus coming onto this earth, the Bible said what? This was, this was why I'm making reference to, to Jesus. Hallelujah. He made himself of no reputation. What I mean, I want us to I want us to digest this. Okay. I want us to digest this. Now, what is character? When we talk about when, when we talk about character, what is character? The 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 the, the, the dictionary defines define this as the mental and the moral qualities distinctive to an individual. 
Hallelujah. The mental and the moral qualities distinctive to an individual. So, you know, the scripture that I've just read in Philippians 2, 17, 7 to 10, you can see that there were some moral or there are some moral qualities which Jesus took upon himself that he really wanted to be associated with Hallelujah. In order for him to be what? To fulfill the mission. In order for him to fulfill the destiny. In order for him to be to fulfill the calling upon his life. So beloved, we cannot come into the kingdom uh, knowing that every one of us has got a calling. Knowing that every one of us has got to serve the purpose of God. Knowing that we have been translated from darkness into light and we still want to carry the old nature. The old nature, which is of this world, into the kingdom of God. Definitely, there will be what? There's going to be what? Confusion. There's going to be what? A friction. Because you can't carry the old nature into the kingdom of God and want to be what? And want to receive the blessing and want to be part and want to be part of Christ's body. Now, I'm going to break it down. Character, now, beloved, before I go on, I want to, I want to let you know. Character is critical, is crucial. It is, it is, listen, it is mandatory for every one of us to, to, you know, be of good character because when we talk about character, I've just given the definition, moral qualities di distinctive to an individual. To be of a good character in the kingdom. Listen, it is not negotiable. You cannot come into the kingdom and still want to uh, be part of the world and still want to carry the old nature into the new king, into the kingdom of God. No, because it is not you know, and it's not acceptable in the kingdom of God. So it is not negotiable. You come into the kingdom knowing that that's why the Bible says in Romans 12, 2, that, that one, we we've only will be transformed by the renewal of our mind. Transformation, because when you come into the kingdom, it is about transformation. God wants to do something in your life. He has taking you from darkness into the light. And so therefore, there are certain things that have to come off. There is the old nature that has to be what? Gotten rid of. So beloved, character is key in the kingdom. If anybody tells you that you can come into the kingdom and still uh, be, part, be part of this world, or still carry the old nature. And I'm going to go on about the old nature. The old nature. Which God, listen. Which God wasn't pleased with. Now, I've always said, there's a different, there's, there's going to be, there's going to be what? A difference between the act and the actor. So God is not angry. Uh, God doesn't hate the prostitute, but he hates prostitution. Because the prostitution is, is a character. It's something that somebody has taken upon himself. Alright? But he doesn't hate the person. So let's that, let, that, let that be clear. Let us, let us distinguish between the two. God doesn't hate doesn't hate what? The person who is a thief. But he, he hates the acts of stealing. So, so how do one become a thief? Because of what? The certain character that they, you know, unconsciously have learned maybe during their infancy up until the time that they became adults or they become adults. And through that, they become what? Thieves or they can become an arm robber. It's just because of the things that they have learned unconsciously. And, 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 and the character and the, that is formed in the what their character that has formed their character so in the same way when you come into the kingdom 
the kingdom means that you what meet Jesus. Hallelujah. That's why that's why in Matthew 6 33, that's that one. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all of these things shall be added unto you. Now you cannot seek the kingdom without meeting Jesus Christ. Now write that down. You cannot seek Jesus, you cannot seek the kingdom without having an encounter with Jesus. You gotta, that is impossible. You, the moment you seek in the kingdom, because he is the way, the truth, and the life, no one coming but to the Father but by him. So it is through him that you seek the Father and you get into the kingdom. And as you have an encounter with him, hallelujah, the true encounter demands that you totally surrender character and it's key in the kingdom. You totally surrender because totally surrendering means you have given everything up. You want to change. You want to change. You you don't want the same old, same old. And so therefore, you want a new lease of life. You want something new. And that's why it has to be through repentance. Now, beloved, what is repentance? What is repentance? You see, we've got to break this down. You cannot come into the kingdom without repentance. And so we have a church full of people that has not even repented and yet calling themselves Christians because repentance means that you have taken 180 degree turn, not 360, 180 degree turn. Hallelujah. Means that you knew of your old nature and you were not happy. You were not happy of your old, not old nature. And you wanted to give something up. And so therefore you made a U10. 180 degrees. And so therefore, once you made a U10, the old nature has to what? Has to come off. And it's gonna not, it's not gonna come off through your own work, your efforts. And that's why you have to have an encounter with Jesus. Hallelujah. Through the, it's going to happen through the Spirit. And so the old nature, once it's come off and you get into the kingdom, now Jesus begins to work on you. Hallelujah. Jesus now begins to, begin to work on you. And so therefore, when he begins to work on you, on you, you begin to develop a new character. Now watch this. How, what's the character we're talking about? In Galatians 2.20, it says that, it says that, that like, listen, the life that I live, it is no longer I that I live. It's because of somebody, it's representative of someone who has had 100% encounter with Christ, not 50%. 100%, 100% encounter. The life that I live now, I now live uh, by the faith in Christ because he now lives on the inside of me. Hallelujah. It's no longer I live by this Christ that liveth on the inside of me. So therefore, Christ begins to what? Form your character. He is just going to be what? The embodiment of your personality. Write that down. So, we have a church, we have a church these days full of people that isn't even recognizing the fact that the kingdom uh, only will accept, watch this, the kingdom only accept people that have repented and given themselves what? To Jesus Christ. And repentance is by what? Totally surrender totally surrendering and putting off the old nature. So therefore, you cannot come to Christ and hang on to the old nature. Hang on to the old you and still want to be part of the kingdom and still want to be part uh, be part uh, of this one. Of this of this, of this, of this, what do you call it? Uh, of this, um, uh, uh, nature, you want to be part of the nature of Christ, but you are holding on to the old you. Hallelujah. 
It is not, it is not feasible. Beloved, it is not what? Feasible. Hallelujah. Remember, Jesus coming to this earth has to what? Make himself of no reputation. Took upon himself the form of a servant because in order for, to fulfill the calling on his life, he knew what was at stake. Same way, if we want to end up in heaven, if we want to get to heaven, if heaven is our destination, if, if heaven is what is on our heart to, 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 to um, get there eventually, then it means that we've got to go back to the basics and know that, listen, you cannot get to heaven with a heart spirit. Right now, you cannot get into heaven with a heart spirit, with a, with pride, with arrogance. You cannot get to, to heaven with what? With, with you what? having a total, you know, uh, disrespect and dishonor uh, going on in your life. You don't, you don't respect you don't honor. You don't have any respect for anybody. No, no, no. Listen, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. Watch this. The kingdom of God. It's based. It's based on the truth. Watch that. Right now, kingdom of God is based on the truth, and you cannot know the truth, and the truth not setting you free. Kingdom of God is based on the truth. And so therefore, when you come into the kingdom, you must have the encounter of the truth. And the truth is Jesus Christ. And so when you have it, you know the truth. The truth shall set you free. Hallelujah. You cannot come into the kingdom and still want to, and still, and still have that kind of what? <laughs> uh, 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 what do you call it? The old nature. Pride lies. You know, the old nature that, you know, has immoral, everything about you is immoral, right? It, it's, listen, it, it is, it is what? Conflicting. Everything about you, I'm not condemning anybody, but tonight God asked me to let, for us to go into this word, into this word for us to know that, listen, character is key. Character and integrity is key. It is, you see, it is part of the kingdom. You cannot be part of this kingdom with what? With, uh, with, 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 with what? The old nature be part of you with no integrity. That means that the kingdom is going to be elusive to you. You just will be by, by an imposter. You are just going to be an imposter. And so there are a lot of imposters posters in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go to some Proverbs 20 and verse 6. Proverbs 20 and verse 6. Amen. Hallelujah. Proverbs 20 and, uh, and verse 6. Let's go there. Proverbs 20, verse 6. When you get there, I know, you know, this is the, as I've said, today is Bible study, so I'm not going to, you know, be rushing. <laughs> Proverbs 20 and verse, and verse 6. Bear with me as I open my Bible. Hallelujah. What does it say? It says that most men Proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find <laughs> a faithful man, a faithful man who can find. Now, beloved, let me tell you in the kingdom, you've got to be faithful, it is a character. We tell him, I began by defining character as the mental and the moral qualities distinctive to an individual. In the kingdom, you cannot come into the kingdom and be lazy. 
You cannot come into the kingdom and be haughty or you know, have a haughty spirit. You cannot come, come to this kingdom and be arrogant. You cannot come into the kingdom and have and be immoral. When I say immoral, you know, doing all sorts of things, stealing, you still knew you, you have been sleeping around. You cannot come into the kingdom and still be doing all sorts of things, you know, and still want to be known as a born again. No, 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 no. See, you see, this is what we need to know that so when you come into the kingdom, there's the clear def definition of who you've become because you have had an encounter of who? Of Jesus Christ. And that encounter with Jesus Christ means that the old nature has been taken off and God is now developing a new nature and through a new nature through his spirit that has been birthed in you. So that's why I'm quoting Galatians 2.20. That is an encounter. And that encounter means that from now you begin to live a new life based on the truth because the truth is Jesus Christ. You cannot mix you cannot mix what you call it, water with, with kerosene. <laughs> it isn't gonna work. <laughs> yes, you cannot mix water with kerosene at the same time. You cannot mix, I think you cannot mix water with petrol as well. It, it is that it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Hallelujah. Amen. So, beloved, the Bible is saying Proverbs 20, verse 6 that a faithful man who can find. Because in the kingdom, it is required of followers. Watch this. It is required of Christians. Because the Christian is was just a name given by, you know, the, the, the world is actually defining us as followers of Christ. But the true followers of Christ are disciples. It is required of followers of Christ to be found faithful. Part of the character. It is crucial to be faithful. A faithful man who can find character in the kingdom means that you be, be faithful. And how can you be faithful and, and be faithful? The faithfulness is based on you pleasing God, pleasing Jesus. And how can you please God? By going out and out, by going out and out through thick and thin to make sure that come what may, you still stand for him in spite of the rain, in spite of the of the circumstances, in spite of the setbacks, you know, you will be found faithful. It is required. It is required of every Christian. It is required of every follower. Character is based Character in the kingdom is based on the truth of the word. The truth of the word is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ took upon himself what? He took upon himself of the form of a servant when he came here on this earth. Made himself of no reputation and was and was what? And, and being found in a function as man, he humbled himself. Humility is part of, is part of the kingdom. You cannot come into the kingdom. And, and be proud and arrogant. These days, these days we don't we don't know the bit the difference between a Christian and a worldly person because we want to say we want to say the only people that we can classify as Christians are those that are in the church on Sundays that we can see them on Sundays. Those so we call them Christians because that's the only way we can see. But but that's not the yardstick that Jesus uses. Jesus is not. He's, he's, he's not, he's not, he's not a man. He's a spirit. So he knows those who are his. Huh? Not by Sunday. By Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Hallelujah. Because he is a spirit that knows you through and through. He looks from the inside out and not from the external. So, the world these days, we can only make a difference, you know, uh, on Sundays when we see people going to church and we see these people are Christians. No, no, no. That's not how, how that's not the kingdom defines it. Say, so, hello, me, a lot of you guys who say, Lord, Lord, Lord. Uh, those who say, who say, Lord, Lord, but on that day, 
not all of them <laughs> will be qualified to enter the kingdom of God. And they will come and be saying, Lord, Jesus, we, we use your name to do this. We, we, we cast our devils in your name. How come we are not being given access to, the, to, to, to heaven? And Jesus will say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Because it is by character, not by gifting. The gifts are without repentance. The gifts are without repentance. But character is what is going to take you. What is in you? What is in you? The word of God, the truth of the word that is in you, that is forming your character. That is what is going to take you to heaven. Beloved, character is key. Faithfulness. A man, uh, the, the Bible says in Proverbs 26 that a faithful man who can find faithful. So, beloved, character. When we want to build our character, first think about faithfulness. First, think about faithfulness, and the faithfulness is like we pleasing God. It's impossible to please God without what faith, and the faithfulness, the faithfulness is what we follow Him through and through. We follow Him through and through, through thick and thin, no matter what. It doesn't matter whether it's raining or shining, whether circumstances are going against us, whether we are facing opposition. No, no, no. It doesn't really matter. You got, you and I have got to be steadfast. Because that's what faithfulness means. Character. You faithfulness means that you are following the word. You are depending on the word. You trust in him. How can you be in the church? I don't want to even use the church again. How can you be in the kingdom? How can you say you follow Christ and and all you do is is trying to please me. He said, the arm of flesh I always fail you. You always trying to please me. That's, you see, you are carrying the old nature. Hallelujah. You carry the old nature because the ultimate goal is for you to please God. Hallelujah. There's no truth in us. There's no truth in us. We cannot say that. We cannot say that you're gonna worship God. Hell, you know, even when when hell is breaking loose in your life, you're gonna be worshiping God. No, a lot of people, a lot of people, throw in a towel when 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 it's getting hot. <laughs> Listen, you see, you cannot, you see, you cannot just. Give up and turn back and run away just because things are not going your way in the kingdom. No, 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 no. That's not, that's, you see, you see, this is when is it, the, the time has come that the true worshippers, now watch this, this is, these are going to be the elements, these are going to be the fundamentals that Jesus and God will be using to accept people into heaven or taking people into heaven. So the time has come where the what? True worshippers who worship him in truth and in spirit. In truth and in spirit. The truth demonstrates the character of Jesus. In truth and in his spirit. Demonstrate the character of Jesus. How can we say we 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 are in Christ, but we hate our brother, we hate our sisters to the extent that we don't even talk to them, to to the extent that we want them dead, to the extent that we scheme and plot against them, to the extent that you know some some are even, some are even you know doing bast you know doing all sorts of things bastarding conniving. My goodness, and we say we are part of the church. Character. I'm not saying I'm perfect, beloved. Don't see me like don't. I mean, I'm, I'm, I am setting the record straight. 
I'm not perfect, but the distinction is Christ living on the inside of me. So he's perfecting all things that is concerning me. He's perfecting all things that is concerning me. That should be your prayer. He's perfecting all things. Your character is key. See, when we say God is perfecting things that is concerning you, we often think that we are thinking about blessing. Oh my goodness. We all we always think about when we say God is perfecting all things because we always we think about oh the car. Oh God is gonna give me the car, the perfect. I don't have a car. Oh God is going to give me a million pounds. God is going to, God is going to give me the, the woman of my dreams. The, God is going to give me the man of my dreams. That's what we think of when we say God is perfecting me. Perfecting all things. It's actually perfecting the character. You see, you want to say perfecting all things that are concerning you. You see, in order for you, watch this, in order for you to attract wealth, in order for you to attract even your customers, in order for you to what? Be a beacon of hope to others, in order for you to be the light. Mm. How can you lose the taste? Hallelujah. And still be called the salt of this earth. No, no. In order for you to, to attract, to have the ability to create wealth, create wealth, in order for you to be the beacon of hope, in order for you to, 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 to talk, speak, and for everyone to hear, hear you and to listen to you, your character must be of the character of Jesus Christ. Perfecting all things because he knows you cannot get to the top without character. Because you can get to the top without what? The good character. But you will come falling down suddenly. Because you did not wait on God. Because what? Well, you did not understand the basics. The basics of what? Of of, of being promoted, is it being promoted in God, of elevation, of God elevating you. Elevation does not come. You see, elevation does not come without anyone pre preparedness, without God preparing you. You got to write that down. Elevation comes based on God preparing you because David had to be prepared for the, for, for, for the throne. Likewise, 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 Joseph had to be prepared for the palace. Jesus had to be prepared for the day that he was, and then what? The day that he was baptized by John, he had to prepare. That's why for 30 years, nobody knew where he was. He was being prepared, although he was the son of God. Elevation does not come without any this. You've got to be prepared. That's why if you are, and you, you see, if you are not popular, and if you are not known, you see, and um, and and maybe you see, uh, you are, you are, you are, maybe you want to get to the top quickly. Maybe you want to be known by people. You want to have, you know, ten thousand followers. You never, you don't know why. You don't know why you are still you still not having those those kind of following. <laughs> because when elevation, when God has an interest, He's perfecting things that are concerning you before you get a promotion. So your silent years, God is using that silent years to prepare you. He has silenced those years on your behalf. He has made, He's making sure that you can don't get you know. You know, don't get known by by the entire world just because he's preparing you. Because even Jesus had to be put in the manger. He had to be hidden. This is the son of God being hidden by another man. Actually, by what? Joseph. He was Joseph. Joseph the father was hiding him. The manger was actually protecting them. The whole, the whole son of God who who I thought the baby, a baby could even a baby that is the son of God could he can, can easily can easily what do what he wanted to do which he which meant he could do what he wanted to do but listen he had to follow the process he had to follow the 
process. So don't be frustrated by the silent years, the kind of silence that you, you experience in some years. Because Joseph, Joseph had to had to what? Let certain things in the background, put it in prison, light up, upon, you know, put it in prison for years, forgotten about. Those were his silent years. God was preparing his character. But these days, people, the moment they have the gift, they want to know, they use their gift, and then want to use their gift <laughs> to attract thousands without what? Recourse to what? Any preparation for elevation. They just want to be known without seeking wisdom, without seeking what, you know, advice. And so just as they rise, because what's this thing? As God has said, your gift is always going to bring you, <laughs> bring you to, to bring you up. It's going to take you to the kings. But then your character is what is going to sustain you. Your character is what is going to sustain you. So when you get to the top and all of a sudden you begin to experience certain kind of um, trials or temptation that come your way and because you were not able to prepare or you didn't give yourself to preparation, it is, it is easy for you to fall. yourself to the preparation you didn't yield yourself to that to, to, to that process so you come falling down you just watch a lot of celebrities a lot of people that have risen but they are nowhere to be found these days they are nowhere to be found these days I, I can mention this but because of political correctness <laughs> yeah I will not mention names for you know a lot of people even, even lottery, even lottery, yeah. People win massive, you know, you can see that they win, they win the lottery and uh, billions, something, millions, and five years later, ten years later, they, they report that these people lost everything. And I'm thinking, wow, what, what happened? What happened? It's just because of their character. Character. You can have the gifts, but without character, you will come tumbling down, you will come falling down, just like that. So, beloved, faithfulness is key. Write that up. Faithfulness is key. Number two, making yourself of no reputation. Write that down. Making yourself of no reputation. Listen, reputation is what you want people to, to perceive you to be. Listen, <laughs> reputation is what you want people to, you know, perceive you to be. And so a lot of people are trying to protect your reputation because, oh, when they mention my name, Martin, no, Martin is a cool guy. That, that's probably my public perception, the public perception of me. Oh, Martin, Martin is a cool guy. Oh, he doesn't talk. Oh, he's a... Uh, He's a very, very quiet <laughs> But listen, the true me, the one, the true me is the one behind closed doors. <laughs> the true me, if you're looking for somebody to give a proper, proper, you know, uh, definition of the character of a pastor or of a bishop, ask their wife. That's the simple thing. Ask their wife. <laughs> As their wife, you see, we, you see, and so you know, things may come out and people will be shocked. Oh, I thought that Pastor Martin was very quiet. He, he couldn't have to fly. He couldn't have to fly. Listen, don't be bothered about the public perception about you. If you have, if you build your character, if you let your character to be based on the truth. Hallelujah. 
God will, you see, you see, God will show through and through for you whether you are outside or inside. Because it is based on the truth in you. That is what? Serving the purpose of what? Developing your character inside out. So you are not bothered about the, you trying, and like, you are not bothered about your, the, how, what the public perceive you to be, and so you want to protect that perception. Meanwhile, your character is nothing to write home about behind closed doors. Behind closed doors. If you are going places, if you want to go places, if you want to get to the top, stop thinking and, 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 and doing everything to protect the public perception of you, to protect the reputation, so-called reputation, and start building your character on the truth of the word. That's what Jesus Jesus at one time, he asked his disciples, you know, you've been out there, what are the people saying about me? <laughs> what, what are they saying about me? Who do? What, what, what are they saying? What are they saying about me? Oh, then some of them were saying, oh, they say you are, you are Elijah. Some of them are saying, I say you are one of the prophets. Now Jesus said, no, 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 no. Listen, 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 listen. <laughs> listen. But, but I, 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 you, you can you, you, you can tell me about what they are saying, but, but what I'm really, really interested in is, is who do you say I am? You've heard about the public perception. Oh, some say I'm a Elijah, some say I'm a prophet, some say I'm, the, I'm one of the prophets. But you, 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 that is close to me, that you, 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 that can see me, you know, in my bedroom, you sit, I walk with you daily, and, 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 and you know my ins and outs. Who do you say that I am? Character. Who do you say? this revelation and upon this rock 
I shall build my church. Now watch this. So the church wasn't built on lies. The church wasn't built on reputation. The church has never built has never been built on money. The church has never been built by a public perception. The church has been built on the true revelation of who Jesus is, making himself of no reputation. The one who is love, the one who is the door, the one who is is what the grace, the one who is the soon and coming king, the one who when he says only that the door is open cannot be shut because his character can never be changed. He is when he says yes, it's yes. When he says no, it's no. And so that is the true rock of the church and the true foundation of the church. And so when you build on this foundation. The gates of hell shall never prevail against such church. So why are we trying to build with money? Why are we why are we trying to build with some connection? Why are we trying to build the church because because of social media? Why are, why are we why are we trying to build the church because of some liking? We say why are we trying to build the church because of what? What the public is saying, it is time for us to forget and 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 and, and not think about the public perception, but what, what the spirit of God is saying, what what who Jesus be in you, hallelujah. Who Jesus be in you. This is the nature of the follower of Christ. Church building is not based on the perception of the public. It's based on the true spirit of Christ in you. That is showing a stand up. We shouldn't be like the Pharisees. Jesus called the Pharisees whitewashed tombs. My goodness. Whitewashed tombs. When, when you see from the stand you tend you tend to think tend to think that it's beautiful oh it's all white but when you get inside it stinks it stinks of dead bodies it stinks we shouldn't we shouldn't build the character because of public perception we don't want to build a brand I, I see you see when you are talking about business, you can take your branding there. Take your branding to the business because in the world, branding is needed. But in, in the church, Christ is the only foundation. We preach the Christ. We have the cross. Ah, oh, my goodness. We preach the Christ who is risen. We preach the Christ who was crucified. We preach the Christ who is the truth. Hallelujah. So when you think about branding, I'm not saying don't associate your church with the many brothers, but it shouldn't be the focus. It shouldn't be the focus. The focus must be the Christ character. Building, being faithful. It is required of a steward to be a faithful. It is a requirement. It's not negotiable. We've got to be faithful to Christ. We don't want to be a whitewash church whitewash church it's so good on the outside every day branding is so good but when we walk in it's full of hate it's full of pride arrogance there are some churches you you see when you go the word the, there's no word it's all about social connection it's about what having friend there and because my friend is there i'm also going to be there because i was born in the church i am going to be there till i die there is no connection between you and christ church is dead white washed so that's why we don't use numbers we don't use numbers to quantify the anointing right now Never use numbers to quantify their numbers. A church could be 10,000. Church could be 5,000. But the church will be what? Spiritually dead. God is looking for the new kind of love. The new kind of character that will build the church. That will build the church. The assembly that is so, so what? Reminiscent of the old days. Of the old church. Of the Elijahs who could call for fire. 
fire could come because of their character. They were faithful. Today, someone will promise you something in the church and what? They, they don't even, they will tell you Tuesday, I will show up with the apples. The Tuesday, you will even call them, they, they have switched their phone off. And the person is an elder. You're <laughs> joking. You're joking. Ananias and Sapphira, you know, we tend to think that that, is, that was olden times. That was olden times. It's still happening now. You can't promise God and say that you go against him and go scot-free. I'm, I'm, I'm anointing, I'm telling you. I'm, I, I am under the anointing. You see, still, Ananias and the, and the Sapphira's what? Punishment is still running in this today, but we don't know. We don't know why. We don't know why some people are going through certain things. It's because you cannot promise God. And when it comes to the promise for you to show up and just remember him, you you tend to now say that it's you, you have you are the self-made millionaire. God will say, Oh, yeah, good, good. But let's see, let's see how the end plans out. Let's see. Because none of us, none of us will carry any money into the grave. None of us. <laughs> Lakama Surya. None of us will carry. So when God is blessing you, and now because you are blessed, you are saying, Oh, I'm self-made millionaire. Oh, I'm I'm made it on my own. Oh, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't want to. Honor him. The, the Ananias and the Sapphira's what punishment is still running. I'm be known to us because God is going to leave you to it. Although you might not die inst instantly, you see, God, God is a way, the God of love. He's God. He's going to give you chances. He's going to give you opportunities. But in the end, that we will see so a powerful man, a man who suddenly. And, and obtain wealth, you know, he was in the church and they obtain wealth. And some man who suddenly God was faithful to, oh, sorry, he suddenly God blessed, blessed him and he attained wealth. He attained what you know, um, the respect worldwide, and he will be lying prostrate, but not even prostrate, he will be lying what motionless. That's the word I'm using. Motionless, motionless, what laid in states didn't live to the last day of his life. The last day originally didn't live to the original last day, the day that he originally had to leave. This cut short. Can't you see? Open your eyes. A lot of people that are dying prematurely just because of the lack of character. Prematurely. We bring diseases upon ourselves because of lack of character. God will forgive you, but the consequences we still will pay for it. Beloved, this is where I'm going to, my time is up, but I want to let you know that you see the church that we're looking for, the church that God is looking out for. You see, church, the day, the day that Jesus will appear, will appear, we will think that. Ah, but I, I thought the church had millions. I thought the church had what billion members. No, no, no. We will see a few because listen, these last days, God is prudent. God is refining. God is pretty. He's looking out for those whose hearts are for him through and through. And listen, this the rapture is coming. It's so near. And then that we're going to enter into the tribulation. And then the end will come. Because, you see, God said time. No one can change it. No one can change it. Beloved, I am going to, I'm going to go. But before I go, I want us to read the scripture before I go. It is up to you. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew 6 and verse 4. Matthew 6 and verse 4. What does it say? It says that thy arms be in secret, and thy father which seek, which seeth in secret himself, shall reward you openly. 
See, it says the father who sees in secret shall reward you openly. So, beloved, character, I want to give you the definition, the, the spiritual definition of character. Before I go, the spiritual definition of character is for God being pleased with you privately. It's for you being truthful and faithful to him. And the truth of God emanating from the inside out and you shine into the world and you walking by the truth. You live in your life by the truth. So you do this uh, from the confines of your room because that is where your character is built. And so therefore when you come out, the perception about you is not based on the reputation. The perception now about you is about the Christ in you. They see Christ in you. And that's where God says that as you do it um, behind the closed doors, you shall be rewarded openly because the glory cannot be confined to a what? To, to four corners of a building. Now, when the glory of God starts shining upon you because the Christ in you is exuding, is coming from the inside out, even when you are indoors, those who are walking by, by the sides will experience the glory, the glory of God. So, beloved, let us start being concerned about our private interaction, our, our private life, our, our private what conversations. It's about our private interactions, our private communication, our heart, uh, the real heart behind the closed doors. That is when we begin to live a life that is full of Christ. That when it's full of Christ, you, you can help but the public will see the Christ in you and you will see the glory that surrounds you. They will now talk about the glory and no reputation. They will talk about the glory and no reputation. That is what we, mean, we need to be aiming. See, you are the son of God because that glory that is on you it's too much. It's too much. It's too much. Beloved, now, this is where we will pack it for two, tonight and uh, come back next week. We're still going to break it down. We're still going to break it down about why we need to have uh, the God, God's kind of character, the God the character that God wants us to develop based on the truth in us. God bless you. May God, may God keep you. May you have a different perception, different perception about the word of God because the word of God is not based on the world's perception. It's about the perception of who you are before God. Hallelujah. Yes, I'm being reminded we have a service on Sunday. Yes, true. Yeah, we've confirmed we are having a service on Sunday. We are having a service on Sunday on the 8th of May, it is going to be good. We are going to have our communion. I want you to come at Odeon to um, the, the venue is at Odeon Room 7, Screen 7. It's going to be good. We are building a church not based on the public perception on how, how it should be or what it should not be. It's about the true character of Jesus Christ emanating from the inside out and no one can hold back based on the glory that is going to come from the inside out. Hallelujah. God bless you. So I'm looking forward to seeing you there on Sunday, on Sunday the 8th, hallelujah, the 8th of May. And then uh, I'm looking on the, uh, the end of um, end of uh, May 29th to, we are going to be in the church. You know, now we are saying we're starting two services, you know, and the month we may pass it. 29th, I'm going to be, we're going to be there uh, and all the, and guess what? We also will have our financial workshop, which the uh, you know a lot of you have been requesting for, we will have it in the afternoon. Odeon are uh, preparing a place for us uh, in the afternoon for us um, that we will have our 
financial workshop in the watch out for watch out for the leaflets very soon uh, to help people people uh, manage their how to manage your finances and it's going to be about how to manage your you know if you have debt how to come out of debt how to you know get a mortgage you know it's going to be very interesting how to secure a mortgage and all that it's going to be very interesting and so on 29 2 is going to be good and so see you see you see you sunday 8th of may come in your numbers god bless you